she introduced me to Beta Sigma Phi, and uh, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Canada is a wealthy country. We can afford to do much better with our seniors, not only with improving long-term care, but also improving home care. <laughs> Between um, young people and their parents and grandparents, it's a two-way street. Hi, my name is Melanie James. I am the Director of Recreation and Support Services for Schlegel Villages. As part of Schlegel Villages Wisdom of the Elder Signature Program, the pursuit of passions encourages our residents to share the devotions of their past and present and reminds us all that our passion in life helps to define us as individuals and brings meaning to us every day. This year's Wisdom of the Elder event focus was our pursuit of passions in the Green Bench campaign. Together they honored the stories and passions of our residents through words and pictures. At these events, I am often asked, what is your passion? It's a hard question, as there are many things that bring meaning to my life. I think being with people is my passion. It brings me immense joy to be with others, family, friends, and loved ones. Continue to live your passions and find your joy. Welcome to another episode of Elder Wisdom Stories from the Green Bench. I'm one of your hosts, Kathy Buckworth. And together with my co-host, Evelyn Brindle, we have a special episode today because we are interviewing two people at once. But before we get to that, we're going to talk a little bit about pursuit of passion, which is something that the Slago Village people have put together in the last few months and something that we're going to talk about today. But Evelyn, you're there. What are some of your passions? Oh, I guess my major passion has been my family. Uh making mm -hmm. sure that they're going the right direction and, and getting an education and following the things that they enjoy the most, uh, sports and teaching and their, all the, the happy, good things in life. And that's my passion. Yeah, that's my passion too. As you know, I have three grandkids. I have four kids. That would be my passion as well as as well as, you know, we need to have some of our own passions, don't we? Things that we just do for ourselves. Is there something that you do for yourself, Evelyn, that you're passionate about? I think primarily uh, reading, keeping in touch with things mm -hmm. that are going on in the world. Well, speaking of great friendships, without further ado, this is more than a friendship. This is a team. I'm introducing you now to Bob and Emily Leland. Good morning, Bob and Emily. Good morning. Good morning. We are so excited to have you on the show today. We, Evelyn and I have been looking through the notes on everything that the two of you do. You were recently a part of the Pursuit of Passions event in the village. Um, tell me about that. Why was that important to you to share your passions with the other residents? Oh. We uh, ha were invited to participate and we thought, we're not quite sure what to do. But as we began to think about it, we decided we had a lot of passions that we do separately and together that would uh, maybe inspire other people to do similar things. So we wanted to share those. We had a lot of fun putting the program together and delivering it. So that in itself was a good passion for me, particularly because I did most of the creation on it. So that's where we, from my side of the things, that's what I felt. And I, following her lead always, because she's the script writer, <laughs> And uh, if people appreciated it, then they seemed to. Uh, we were very aware of Ron Schlegel sitting down in the front row, and he just seemed to be smiling and nodding. And so we thought, hey, we've made a connection to the audience. I love it. What else can we tell you? I also um, understand that you have written uh, 12 long letters to your children. And... Um, I, th I find that very interesting. You know, like, I think we all, as we reach a certain age, want to pass on some of our own history to the kids and have them learn some things from us. But what was the most important thing you told your children in this, 
those letters? Oh, let's see. That's a hard question to answer. Let me just say that one of the things that I wanted to do in doing that is to respond to their requests, because when we used to be together, the children would ask me, tell us the stories, some of the stories about your growing up, because I never realized that I had an unusual uh, life, life cycle. Uh, my father died when I was three. Uh, I was born in the Depression in 1932, and my father died in 1935. And in the United States, there was no social network. So yes. my mother had two children, one of whom was sick, my sister, who died in 1941. So I've had a, an interesting life cycle. So then after I left, so then she put me in an institution where I lived with about 100, 125 boys for eight years between the ages of eight and 16. Then I left and lived with her for a while before I went to school. Um, and so as I would tell these stories about my time at Clayton College and in the things I did uh, in, in work and in school and in other kinds of things, they just liked what I did. And they said, tell us about it, Dad. And I said, well, I need to because I don't have a, a sense of how I belong. And so I needed to find out for me. And so what I did was to find out my history about when the Leland family came to North America, when the Longan family, my mother's side, came to North America, and how that transpired. So I began, I began to feel like I have, a, I have a line now, and I feel like I belong somewhere. And I just wanted to transmit that to the children and let them know what their linkages were uh, over time. That's such a great story, Bob. I love that. I love the fact that you're documenting that for your kids. It's so important to know where we came from so we know right. where we're and going. As I did this, I thought I, I gave them, uh, I decided I would do it letters from dad uh, as, as the method. And mm -hmm. what I did was then give them a binder, a one inch binder and said, I'll have this done. I'll have these letters done in uh, in a year, you'll, you'll, by, by next Christmas, you'll have this complete. Well, 12 years later, I finally completed it. <laughs> and, and, the, and the binder became three inches instead of one. Well, it sounds like you have a love of documentation. And I know I'm going to turn to Emily now because I know Emily has a love of documentation as well, because I've been reading through what, what you do, Emily, and it's absolutely fantastic. Please tell us about planning for my future. I'd be happy to do that. In the fall of, 20, of 2022, um, I became part of a focus group at University Gates, and we were working on end-of-life matters. And the group discovered that there are several important matters which residents living in a village like this need to consider in order to be prepared for all eventualities as we approach our final days. And my passion for everyone needing to be good to go meant that I ended up doing the preparation for and the presentation of several matters throughout the five sessions that were held in the town hall here. And the matters that we shared included, first of all, ensuring that all the necessary legal documents are updated and including naming a substitute decision maker. And we've discovered that some people coming to the village either didn't have an updated will or didn't have an up, a substitute decision maker or even know what that meant. Hours of attorney. And um, being over the age 65, mm -hmm. by the way, is not necessarily the time to start thinking about getting these documents. Anyone who reaches the age of majority should have a will and preferably the two power of attorneys as well. Mm -hmm. And um, because life can be complicated. For instance, the day I presented the wills matter, we went shopping afterwards at Staples and in conversation with a young man who was helping us, um, Bob asked him if he had a will because he told him what I had been doing that day. And he said, well, no, I don't, but I think I probably need to think about it because this morning on the way to work, I was almost T-boned. So he realized that, yes, it's important for me to think about those things. And then the next session, we talked about special care, um, like palliative and hospice care that are possible when those needs arise. And we talked about where they might be offered in this community. 
And then we spent a good amount of time talking about MAID, medical assistance in dying, and help trying to help people understand what this new thing is all about, what their rights are, what possibilities there can be. And for each of the sessions, of course, we gave handouts to everybody about that session. So they had lots of resources to take with them to either themselves check things or get family to help them um, discover what information in addition that they might need to know. Our, our final sessions were making sure that people had everything recorded somewhere that their loved ones would need to know when they could no longer communicate. So whether they were going to use a fill in the blank book, which we made available for them through taking orders, or whether they wanted to create a personal document on the computer following the example of one that we had created starting in 2009, um, we just encouraged everybody to record everything which included things, not only names of family and, and friends, but contacts of uh, people on your day-to-day -day life, like the doctors and uh, even your foot care specialist and hairdresser, in case that appointments had to be canceled sometime in the future. And um, so we just made it possible for residents to uh, get that information down in the best way they could. Number of people bought the book and were bought even a book for their family because they realized their kids needed to do the same thing. And uh, even some of the staff here were drawn into the importance of documenting their information. And for quite some time after the sessions finished, residents would still stop me on the street and ask questions and clarifications. So while that was a short term kind of activity, I felt that my passion to make sure that everybody knew what was going to be helpful for them in the coming days and uh, knew what to do uh, was a success for me. It's a very important just-in-case file that you put together and how many people really don't know how to do that or what should be included, but uh, having gone through uh, my sister-in-law's uh, death and his estate, uh, it's very difficult trying to find that information uh, when it's not readily available, like the bank accounts, uh, where she had her insurance to come from, what jobs that she had had or their own private life insurance, uh, your information about who holds a mortgage on your home. Uh, all of those things take so much time. And sometimes it, it's a year later when you run it or more when you run across information and say, oh, dear, didn't know about this. I've got to contact them. <laughs> yes, I know it can be very confusing for those left behind uh, not to know even where to look for information. So that's what we're trying to encourage people to do. And our one inch binder also includes all the materials that we have put together um, related to the funeral home process. And, yeah. and so we've got all that on file. We have chosen to do prepayment for those kinds of services. And we're also putting together some information about things that we might like to have in the service that would recognize our life. And so we're leaving nothing to chance, really. My parents have a binder like that with the service laid out in it. And just last week, my mom informed me that they've decided to skip any sort of visitation because you know what, Kathy? People can just <laughs> zoom it in if they want yeah. to. So that's where we are with my parents <laughs> planning now. Um, and they're not wrong. And they and you're absolutely right. It gives me great peace of mind to know that that binder yeah. is available. Well, to me. and the other thing, since you mentioned the zooming, Kathy, is that. Today, the other thing that needs to be included are your passwords uh, to your accounts and because uh, everything is done on the internet. And uh, I've heard of a couple of friends who had a lot of difficulty getting into their husband's account after he had passed away uh, because 
they didn't know the password. And so much of what we do today is online, banking and so on, that that's also an important thing to include in that binder. Well, it is. It is. And we have you also had for a long time a multi-page sheet that goes from A to Z that has every um, online contact listed that we can think of, which has our passwords and whatever other information that might be needed to uh, have available in terms of termination dates for certain contracts and that kind of thing. So yes. that's, a, that's a, we refer to it all the yes, time because well, we can't remember either. <laughs> yeah, And you have to keep obviously that binder somewhere safe with all the passwords on it. But what you also want to include is your digital footprint as well to what do you want to happen to your Facebook page? Are you on Instagram? You know, do you have streaming services, et cetera? How do you want your online profile um, to exist? You know, it's tough you're gone? having be, to be introduced to the 21st century for us old people. I mean, none of this was around when I was training as an engineer, <laughs> and I wondered why it wasn't. Right. Yeah, no, exactly. I understand, besides talking about the just-in-case files, um, which you've just described in wonderful detail, I understand, Bob and Emily, there's a get-around-to-it <laughs> file, maybe, too. Can you tell me about that? Well, in uh, in the 70s, I believe it was there was a a little um, medallion that was often handed out as a, uh, a coaster to put under glasses that uh, called itself a round to it. And the explanation was that people would often say, I just couldn't seem to get around to it. And so at the beginning of the sessions that uh, I presented, I made sure that everybody left with a round to it in their hands so that they had no excuses for not following through. And saying that I never got around to it. Nice. Well, you, you have a round to it now, so <laughs> don't delay. Get on with the work. Know that you both share a passion for learning something new uh, because it keeps you sharp. And I really share that with you, learning something every day that I didn't know before. Uh, but one way you do that is watching educational DVDs together. That's exactly what are What are some of the your favorite topics? Well, let me just say that for about 15 years, we believe in continuing education. And we can't get to the university, which does provide it uh, if we needed to. But for 15 years, we've gone to school three nights a week. The location is in easy access. It's our den where the DVDs from the Great Courses <laughs> Teaching Company provide continuing education on a myriad of subjects such as geology, history, various religious topics, music, literature, physics in your life, the human body and how it works, the brain and how it works even while we sleep, and how lifestyle and aging affect its performance. Because of physical and fiscal restraints, we are now professional armchair travelers. And so we have, through the teaching company, a number of places we have visited. We've toured uh, Egypt, Iceland, Greece, Italy, France, England, Scotland, and Wales, and many more, all from our armchairs. We don't have to worry about the, the airport, checking baggage, packing and unpacking suitcases, and getting on and off buses, which we can't do very well now. So this provides us an excellent opportunity to travel and to learn and keep ourselves mentally alert. It's called The Teaching Company. It's based in the U.S., and these are all professionally okay. done, and they're, they are all university-level lecturers on, in the subjects that we get. So if people wanted to, they can just Google online the great courses and uh, greatcourses.com, and they'll get a list of, I think there's 800 or so uh, subjects, uh, lectures that are available. So if mm -hmm. people are interested in it, they can continue to do continuing education right from their home. It is. That's amazing. Are there are there are there topics sometimes that one of you is interested in the other one is not? When the catalog comes, we usually have a good reading period through it and and mark the ones that each of us mm -hmm. would like to uh, purchase, and then we discuss what's the important ones to get for right now, and we order one or two or three, 
and then keep ordering. We have and still have a number on our shelves that we haven't watched. And uh, most recently, right now, we're in the middle of watching one on um, architecture and um, and how structural, construction structural uh, engineering structural engineering. So, and you so asked the question, how do you pick pick them out? Well, this is a field. This is my field. This was civil engineering uh, and religion. So Emily is interested in religion too, and she's interested in music. Uh, but some of the things that I know about that she doesn't know about, she's learning about. And some of the things I don't know about that she knows about, I'm learning about. So the, it's mutual. Uh, when we set, select a course, uh, there's only been one course that we did not watch in its entirety because it was different than we expected. And we may go back and do it later on. The point is to keep learning uh, as long as you can and be stimulated by people who know what in the world they're talking about. Well, I feel like Emily could probably put together a DVD series herself on creative <laughs> cooking. I understand that's one of your passions, Emily. And and I read somewhere that you're, there's there's never been a leftover you didn't like or something like that. Like you can do anything well, with a yes, leftover. Is that right? Sometimes uh, when Bob or people ask what's for the next meal and I'll just say, well, whatever falls out of the fridge when I open the door. Um so, yes, I do um, enjoy working in the kitchen, which includes doing the basic entree kinds of stuff, but also uh, doing special baking. And it's just, as I indicated in my presentation, my early years, both at my mother's side, and she had a lot of guidance and patience, um, but in the my early teens, I participate in it in 4-H homemaking clubs for five years. And in those clubs, we learned how to do all kinds of homemaking things from cooking to gardening to sewing and uh, just different uh, projects in each of those fields. So that added to my knowledge about the importance of the following the food guide for health and uh, I'd like to think that one of the reasons both of both of us are still doing pretty good health wise is that we eat good balanced meals because I just keep that in mind every time I cook something, except for maybe the special treats that we have now. Again, we know they're not on the food guide for health, but <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? You have to have some special treats. And, you know, you're right. Um, the leftovers, I love this because Canada is a country that has a lot of food waste right now. So, um, you know, being able to do something with those leftovers is well, super Well, I think important. probably the amount of food I have thrown out through our 46 years of marriage could be in, contained in a one liter container. Um, there's just, if it's possible, I just put it in the freezer and we it shows up in soup later on. Good points to make as well. Uh, so living there at uh, Mills, uh, you, or rather, no, it wasn't Taunton Mills. University, yeah. University Gates, yes. yes. Um, you're not participating in their meal plans? You're doing your own cooking every day? Absolutely. We just are still totally independent. And we have depended on the nursing staff now and again. And uh, we've depended on the hobby, stop, hobby shop staff a great deal, particularly as I prepared my presentations. Uh, but in terms of participating in activities and using the meal plans, we do not, certainly we don't do the meal plans right now. If right. someday, if we need to, we'll get into that, but not at the present time. Okay, great. Uh, you mentioned the hobby staff, and I know we have a terrific one here at Erin Meadows, and I'm sure they've got a great program there as well. Participate in a lot of their programs there, both of you? No, we really don't participate in... Very selectively. Yeah, very uh, selectively we because... participate in programs just because we are busy doing our own thing. Um, we don't at this point have the need for interaction with other people that happens through card games and those kinds of things. We just have our own thing at this point in, to, in ourselves plus our outside friends and activities. 
And um, so we just have chosen um, not to be involved a great deal. Okay. But we do we do participate occasionally. Like uh, this week was uh, National Sunday week or something like that or day. And so Sunday we had a we had a, had Sundays down in the uh, social club. Social club, and so we went down and had our ice cream ice ice cream Sunday. That's right. Well, how can you not well, participate in that? I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. I wanted to loop back just a bit and talk about where we started this discussion, which was on the Pursuit of Passions event. Um, and Bob and Emily, I wonder if you can tell me why you were asked to present during this event. We're not sure, except I expect it may have been because of our interactions. The question was asked to us, would you be willing to do this? We said yes, and we had no idea what we were saying yes to. But, but as the as the project <laughs> grew and we finally figured out what was needed, then it was satisfying to us to participate fully. In we thought we might have something to say. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like you definitely did. Can you tell us a little bit about how you presented yes. your Emily, talk? Emily, uh, Emily wrote a script, and uh, we started. We started by introducing ourselves, and she said, "I'm uh, I, I, I'm I'm Bob, and this is Emily." And oh, she said, "No, that's not right." And then I just said, "Come on, honey, we've been married for how long have we been married?" She said, "Not long enough." Anyway, and so that's beautiful. And uh, and we ended our session with uh, uh, just wait. Well, in the in the process of presentation, I had prepared a number of slides oh, that yeah. were shown on the screen that related to each of the topics that that uh, we went through in our presentation. And so it uh, went from starting out with the slide about age is a matter of the mind, if you don't mind, it doesn't matter, and talking a little bit about that through the passions that uh, we the simple passions we share from our living here which is includes the reflections in the lake that we see every morning when we get up and the beautiful colors and trees around us uh, we just enjoy the view from our north uh, east windows from the and, floor. Uh, and it makes us feel that we're kind of out in the country which is what both of us like and uh, so from there, then we went into our individual passions and um, each, each section, each slide, each, pre- each passion had a special slide that went with it, have the picture as well as the verbal presentation. Well, clearly you have to do a YouTube video of it now so that everyone <laughs> can watch your okay. presentation. Okay. That's your next Accept challenge. <laughs> Exactly. Um, one of the one of the reasons we do this podcast, of course, is hearing these wonderful stories. But also, we have such smart people like yourselves on the program that we like to draw elder wisdom from. So I'm going to pitch that to you now. And you're both such positive people. Do you have any advice on how to maintain that positivity? Well, one of the things that I enjoy is being sure that I can have people that I interact with smile and laugh sometime through the day. Uh, I'm. I'm a believer that, uh, as as I used to learn from the old Denver Post, laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone, and that's unfortunately uh, too bad. But uh, I I enjoy. I, it seems to me that our outlook on life is that uh, we're here such that whatever time we're here, and one of our jobs is to be sure that we can bring some joy or peace or contentment or consolation to somebody whose lives we touch. That's part of the, our, our, our daily prayers uh, at mealtime is to, is to affect the lives positively of those with whom we interact. And so I try to do that a little bit and, it, and I, do, I do succeed almost every day. When we were running the business, we, we taught our staff f- within five seconds of a person entering our store you smile at them, and almost always they would return the smile. That's the way people are. We enjoy going down Main Street and interacting with staff. And um, sometimes the staff are having a tough day, and 
often when Bob says something to them, they will laugh and say, thank you, I needed that laugh today. For, for example, one of the staff was talking uh -huh. about, uh, uh, and I talked about being up and getting ready to go in and, and shave, and I still was in my underwear. I thought about sometimes going out to get get the paper from the mailbox right outside the, our door on the eighth floor. And uh, I said, I've, I've resisted doing that but because I'm just I'm just too sexy. And she just broke up over that. <laughs> so if I would if I were to say to older people and I am not going on 91, if I were to say to older people, if you can maintain as much as you can a positive attitude and want to communicate that to other people as you interact with them. One of the things I learned in the years of my ministry is that uh, everybody has a story and many of the stories need to be told and want to be told. And many of them ha have some difficulties related to them. And my job was to try to help them understand what they were experiencing and that it wasn't permanent. One of the things I admire about Bob is that, and he throughout his life, wherever, whatever setting we were in, uh, a big crowd, he would just kind of work the room and meet everybody and he would ask questions and that got people talking and i just admired him for being able to do that i was kind of a wallflower all my life and wished that i could be more outgoing than uh, than i had been and so i appreciate his ability just to make conversations with anybody he meets and he can generally find questions that will follow through with what they want to share. My daughter, my daughter enjoys that too. She said, Dad, that's one of the things that I wish I could learn from you, that uh, how you can find the entry question of their interest that will allow them to uh, begin to tell you what's going on in their lives and something that you might help them with. That is a very special talent. And your talent of conversation and passion and sharing with us today has been something that we have treasured. I know, Evelyn, you probably feel the same. I hope you we, sorry. We have one um, passion that we would like to share before we leave, one fun, mutual course. passion. Santa Claus last Christmas brought me a present, and this is what it said. When, when we, we get, get to, to the, the end, end of our, our lives together, together the, the house we had, the cars we drove, the things we possessed won't matter. What will matter is that I had you and you had me. Well, that's such a perfect way to wrap up this episode today. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you, Bob and Emily Leland. Thank you so much for sharing your passions and your lives and your stories with us. I have to go now myself and do some armchair traveling and some learning so I can keep up um, with y'all. And I thank you so much for joining our Elder Wisdom Stories from the Green Bench today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you for in, thank you for inviting us to participate. You compliment both of us. Continue exploring new things together, both of you. Well, thanks to Emily and Bob Leland for joining us on this episode of The Green Bench. We really appreciate it. And on behalf of my co-host, Evelyn Brindle, I'd like to thank you for giving us the chance to bring you, our listeners, these stories of elder wisdom. We'd love to have you subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already done so, but we'd also love to hear your words of wisdom on social media. Please do using the hashtag Elder Wisdom, which will also help others to find us on this green bench. We do love a review and a rating on the podcast. You can easily find it by going to elderwisdom.ca and following the link. Take a look at the Elder Wisdom Pledge Against Ageism while you're there, and please think about signing it. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Kathy Buckworth, and along with Evelyn Brindle, we look forward to sharing some more Elder Wisdom with you on the next episode of Stories from the Green Bench. Elder Wisdom, Stories from the Green Bench, is brought to you by Schlegel Villages, a complete continuum of care, offering independent living to long-term care, celebrating and honoring the wisdom of the elder. To learn more about us, please go to our website, schlegelvillages.com.